<laughs> Hi, I'm Mary Poplin. Welcome to NAB 2014. I'm Imagineer Systems Los Angeles-based product specialist, and we're going to be talking a little bit about what's new in version 4. Let's talk about what's new. So some of the things that are new in version 4 are going to be, we're going to have a stereo roto tool set, so everything in Mocha has been rewritten in stereo for version 4. That means our removes will work in stereo, means our roto will work in stereo. The cool thing about the roto in stereo is that it will automatically offset. I want to show you some of that. Now, we're also going to have customizable keyboard shortcuts, so let's talk about what that means. We can actually come over here to our keyboard shortcuts, we can go to customize, and by default, we will actually have our regular, uh, our, our regular key sets, but we will also have After Effects and Nuke already profiled in here for you After Effects and Nuke users, because we got a lot of requests from that. If you want to program in specific things like Cinema 4D or Fusion, you are welcome to. You just create your own profile, and that is very easy to do. Now. We also are going to have Python scripting support. So for those of you pipeline nerds who write amazing tools to fit our product into a big studio pipelines, we're going to have support for that. You guys asked for it. We made it happen. It wasn't easy. All right, now. <laughs> like JP's in the background going, no, it wasn't. Um, <laughs> all right. We're also going to have Retina display support and new UI improvement. Don't worry, we're not going to change anything so much that you don't recognize the program. We are going to make everything cleaner and a little bit easier to use. Now, we're also going to have new imports and exports and various codec supports. So if you found that, you know, perhaps the codec that you wanted to use wasn't supported inside of Mocha, maybe it will be this time. All right? Or, yes. So. We're also going to have new exports and codec support, so that's going to be for inputs and outputs. Now, moving right along, let's talk about what Mocha is, how it works, why it works, why you care. All right. For those of you that are just tuning in, for those of you that are just tuning into Mocha in general, we're going to go ahead and show you how Mocha works. Now, what Mocha is is Mocha is a planar tracker. Now, what does that mean? That means that Mocha tracks a pattern of pixels as they move relative to one another through a scene. Now that sounds like a mouthful. What that actually means is that we track a texture that moves in one direction. So we're going to go over here and we're going to um, draw a shape around the side of this lovely actress's face. The goal here being, like, let's say my director has this shot, okay, and it's delivered, the, um, the elements aren't available anymore, and he's like, you know what, I kind of want to take the shine off her face. How do we do that? Well, the way we do that is we go ahead, we track the plane of the side of her face, because that's where we're going to hook our roto up to. We go ahead and we hit track backwards. Now what you're going to notice is that Mocha's going to hang on even though we have things occluding her face. Now the wonderful part about that is we can take roto and hook that right up to it. Now I did notice that it looks like we had a little bit of a hiccup there. Oh no. Yeah, we did. So what we're going to do is we're going to switch to manual track right quick, and we're just going to delete that keyframe. And now our problem is solved. We're going to hit back to large motion. We're going to go ahead and name this face track. All right, and now we're going to lock that, turn the gear off, and hide it. Now, you'll notice that Mocha largely ignored the objects moving in front of her face. The reason that it ignored that is Mocha ignores irrelevant data, okay? So what I mean by that is that that data wasn't in the shot long enough for Mocha to be too distracted by it. Now we're going to use the Add to x -Pline tool. We're going to make some finer roto shapes around these shines right here on her face. We're going to go ahead and link this. We're going to call this Face Shine. And we're going to go ahead and link this to Face Track. So right under here in Link to Track, we're going to go to Face Track. All right, and now our roto is going to be linked to our shot, I mean our track for the entirety of the shot. So we can now start to export this. So, how do we export this? Well, we can export our tracking data from Mocha version 3 and 4 to After Effects corner pins or After Effects transform data, assimilate scratch um, corner pins, and let's just go down the list. We also export to um, Autodesk point trackers, Autodesk stabilizer data, so that's going to be for your flame and your smoke tools. We're also going to export, to, well, we currently export to Avid DS, Boris, Digital Fusion, Final Cut, Motion, Nuke, Trackers and corner pins, Quantel corner pins, and shake scripts, okay? Now, the reason we still support shake scripts is because actually other programs still support them, so we tend to export that. They can be imported by other proprietary programs. We also export our shape data. Our shape data in version 4 is going to export to Premiere. That's our big new announcement. So we're going to, going to export our, sh our roto shapes to Premiere. We also export currently to Combustion, Flame, Nuke Roto Paint, and Roto Nodes, Shake Roto Shapes, Mocha Shape Data for After Effects that pastes in as an effect and as a spline, and Mocha shape data for Final Cut. All right, so if none of those work for you, you can actually go to File, Export Rendered Shapes, and you can render out grayscale maps with motion blur if you like, or you can go ahead and export by matte color. Now let's move on. Speaking of Roto, one of the things I want to show 
is Stereo Roto, actually. So we can actually take our um, our Roto inside of uh, Mocha for After Effects version 4, and what we can do is we can track right eyes and left eyes at the same time. Now let's talk about what that looks like. So let's say I want to track a new thing in the shot. We've already started doing some of the Roto in the shot. But let's say I want to track more of the um, objects inside of the shot. Let's come over here. What we can do is we can go ahead and start tracking this young boy's head here. We're going to go ahead and just soften that. We're using X blinds. I like X blinds because you relax for a curve and pull tight for corners. We're going to call this head track. All right. And we're just going to track this backwards in our shot. And what we're going to do is we're going to correct this because actually what we're doing is tracking and rotoing at the same time. So we're just going to come over here and we're going to correct this shape. All right. And we're going to continue to track this backwards. All right. So. Very, very quickly, we end up getting the roto information that we need. All right, so we're just going to leave this here, jump here, and there we go. All right, so we're just going to track this a little more, track backwards, and we're done. All right, so it's just that easy. What we do in, in roto inside of Mocha is we go ahead and we correct where our shapes are offset or where we don't like our shapes. So in this case, I'm just going to adjust my points right here. Now what will happen, and what you'll notice, is that we actually can have this track in stereo right right now. So if I click on this, go to left and right, left and right, left and right, you can see that our roto is actually working inside of stereo. Now we can also export this in stereo. So if I go to my track and I go to export shape data, I can go to Mo I can go to nuke roto nodes, okay? And so we're gonna go all visible layers, copy the clip. We can actually paste it right into Nuke. So let's just show you what that looks like. So inside of Nuke, so inside of Nuke, you can see that we have our stereo roto pasted right in. It just pastes right in as a roto node. And you can see that it's organized according to left and right splines, all right? So this is a fairly easy workflow we're pretty proud of. We're very excited to show that off to you. Moving right along, we can also export our Roto to Premiere. This is what I want to show you as well. So we have here this Roto. We want to export this Roto to Premiere. We've already rotoscoped it. Suffice to say, you track and Roto at the same time. You end up cutting your Roto in half, okay? Cutting the Roto time in half by actually cutting your keyframes down to about a third of what you would normally use. So in this case, I wrote this whole shot in about 15 or 20 minutes. What we're going to do is we're going to take all of this data and we're going to export it to Premiere. So we go to export shape data. All visible layers. We go ahead and copy that to the clipboard. We go over here to Premiere. We're going to go right over here to Premiere and we're going to go to Edit, Paste. All right. Now, so the other thing I want to show off is our lens and insert tool. Now, let's say I got this shot on my desk and we're looking at it and we're like, okay, this isn't so bad. This is a really easy thing to track, except for now it goes totally off screen. All right, that's actually really difficult. The other thing we need to solve for inside of the shot is we actually need to solve for the lens warp as well. So let me show you very quickly how that's done. We're going to find a section of our shot where we have crisp lines. I'm going to go to my lens tool, and I'm going to ask Mocha to locate every line in the shot that it thinks needs to be straight. So we say locate lines, and Mocha says everything needs to be straight because it's a computer. Well, we just say, nope, these lines need to be straight. In for new line, we connect the dots. In for new line, we connect the dots. In for new line, connect the dots, and in for new line, we connect the dots, all right? So we end up with a couple of reference points that we can use to calculate our lens. We then have to decide what kind of solve this is. It's either a one parameter, two parameter, or anamorphic solve. So what does that mean? One parameter is your normal barrel distortion, so it's one sphere. Fish eye is going to be two spheres, so it's two parameters. And anamorphic is anamorphic's its own like oblong thing, but you guys know what it looks like. So we're going to go ahead and hit one parameter and calibrate. And what we end up with, so what we end up with is this lovely curve lens calculation that we can then use to track our data. All right, so we have our lens data. So now what, what, do, what do we do? Well, actually, we track it. So we go over to our track tab. Turn our overlays off. I'm sorry. We're going to turn our, our grid off for a second here. Now, when we draw our shapes around our screen, it's very important that we draw around the outside and that we actually use the add to x blind tool, and we come in here and we actually cut out the middle. Let's show you what that looks like. So this is what we're tracking. Now, the add to x blind tool actually subtracts from the middle of something and then adds to the outside of it. So that's a really good thing to know. Now we're going to go ahead and cut this section out in the middle because it's a reflection. And Mocha is a planar tracker. It means it's tracking texture. This moving texture is not moving the same way that our screen is. We're going to make sure that we account for that. Now I'm going to turn on our grid and surface tool over here. And we're going to go ahead and track this. Let's turn our mats off. So we're going to track this through the scene. 
And I'm not actually going to make you sit through this whole entire track, but suffice to say, it tracks very nicely. All right. And so from here, we can actually go to our lens tool and we can export our lens data as a distortion map clip that will go into something like Nuke, Maya, Cinema 4D, etc. Or we can come over here to our Mocha lens data for After Effects. We can copy that clipboard and that will actually paste in as an effect inside of After Effects. Now then we can go to our track tab, we can go to export our tracking data, we can export, export a quarter pin, we can start to composite those together inside of a compositing program. But that actually sounds like a little bit more work than what I want to do. So I'm going to come over here to the insert tab, I'm going to turn my motion blur on, click on my insert clip, and I'm actually going to load in our free fall clip here. Basically this is the little girl dancing. We're going to make sure that it looks good in the shot, okay, and I'm going to go ahead and hit render forward. And what Mocha will do is Mocha will render this with its own alpha channel, okay, its own lens warp and its own motion blur, and I can just drop that into my comp very, very easily. The other thing I want to show you guys is that we also, again, as usual, take your 2.5D planar data and turn it into 3D data. So here's how that works. The first thing we need is a planar track, and then we use our surface tool to calculate our camera solve. So if you look at our track here, we've got a very nice track. It's right here on the wall. All right. Now from here, we're actually going to take this 2.5D surface and we're going to make it 3D. So what that looks like is we have to decide what kind of camera it is. So it's a pan tilt zoom camera, right? Um, if it's on a tripod and it's either panning, tilting, or zooming. Now, we're also going to have small parallax and large parallax solves, or we already do have them. So small parallax is a camera that's way over there, looking at objects way over there, and the parallax between those objects is small. Large parallax is going to be closed cameras, closed objects, and the parallax is going to be quite large. So, this is a pan tilt zoom shot. We actually only need one, one uh, planar track in order to get a pan tilt zoom camera solve. Those are also called nodal camera movements. And then for anything that has parallax, we actually have to have two non-coplanar planes because those non-coplanar planes are what gives us this parallax data. Okay. Now, this is going to be great for putting 3D models into a scene, doing object tracking. It's going to be great for motion graphics. It's going to be great for putting 3D titles in. It's going to be great for single plane set extensions. And that's what we're going to do here, a single plane set extension. We're going to turn this warehouse into a prison. So we're just going to come over here to pan, tilt, zoom, and hit solve. Mocha will think about it and spit out a solve quality down here. We're then going to take this. We're going to export our camera data. We can export our camera data to After Effects 3D motion data, FBX data, which can go into Maya, Cinema 4D, et cetera. Um, FBX is specifically for Nuke that you load into a Regio for your point cloud and a camera node for your camera. And then hit Film Composite Shots. We're just going to go ahead and copy our After Effects data to the clipboard. Come over here to After Effects. And what we do is we paste in our camera and our nulls. And what we end up with is a lovely solve where our camera is moving and our nulls are still. We have to solve for a single non-moving object in order to get a camera solve or two non-coplanar non-moving objects to get a camera solve. And if we want to do motion tracking, we actually motion track the object after we've done the camera solve and we export all of that into After Effects. And then those motion tracked objects, their nulls would be moving as well as the camera. So you can see that our nulls are still because it's the wall here. And you can see that there's only one bit of transform data in here. Now we hook up a 3D layer to our transform data what we end up with is this lovely solve that actually works. So if you want to see what that looks like, we've now turned a warehouse into a prison. All right. Now we can do the same thing in Nuke. All right. And the way that works is I actually really highly recommend Memo World makes a tool, and we're going to actually be showing their demo online as well. Matthias Moll from Memo World makes a wonderful tool for After Effects and for Nuke, respectively that will take your data and do a lot of automatic compositing tools with it. So what that means is in Nuke specifically, one of the cool things I like about it is when you have to make a camera rig, you actually have to have several nodes. Now that's because a lot of Nuke artists like a lot of control. But if you want to just very quickly get a camera node in here, what you do is you go to um, import, Mocha import, and you go to full camera rig. You load your FBX, and what it'll do is it'll actually spit out this camera rig for you. So you can actually do the same sort of thing in Nuke very, very easily. All right, now, the last thing I want to show you guys is our remove tool. Our remove tool is the closest thing that we get to black magic inside of Mocha. All right, so what that looks like is this. Now, in this shot, what we have here is we have this shot from RoboCop, and it's actually a very cool shot. We have a digital actor that we need to remove so that we can put RoboCop inside of this shot. Now, the reason for that is this guy is distinctly human-shaped. RoboCop has a waist that's like about this big. So this guy's got a normal waist. So we've got to take him out and put him back in digitally. So what we do is we define the guy that we want to remove. We define this in the exact same way that we do any sort of roto inside of Mocha, which is to say we can track and roto at the same time, or we can track and link roto shapes up to it. In this case, I just tracked and rotoed a garbage mat over him at the same time. 
You notice that we're staying way outside of his lines. The reason we're doing that is because we actually want to make sure that we don't leave his motion blur on the background because those will be pixels that we're leaving on the background that we'll use to try to get this solved done. So what I need to do is I need to make sure he doesn't contaminate anything with either his motion blur or his shadows. Now, the last thing we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and track the background because that's how we remove an object. We cannot remove an object if we don't have a background track behind it. And you'll notice the guy is above and the background is below. The reason for that is we want to hold the guy out of the background track. Mocha treats everything in the layer pile that's at the top of the layer pile as close as the camera. Everything at the bottom of the layer pile is furthest from the camera. What that means is as long as you roto from the foreground to the background, you'll always have holdout mats for every single thing that you track. Now we're going to go ahead and hit track backwards. And what we're going to do is we're going to get this very nice saw where Mocha is going to track the background, okay? We're going to, then going to use that background data in order to replace this object. So I'm going to go over here to my Remove tab. I'm going to go hit Remove. I'm going to select my guy. I'm going to turn my overlays off so this looks extra impressive, and we're going to hit Render Backwards. So what we end up with is we end up with this Auto Remove, okay, that comes in here, and it actually looks at the background track and where the guy isn't, and it replaces his pixels based on that. So as long as I can see behind him, Mocha can see behind him, and it will replace the object automatically. If I can't see behind the object, I actually have to make a clean plate in Photoshop or something like that and load it into Mocha, and then Mocha will adjust the lighting and fix that throughout the shot because you're actually showing it what exists behind it. Now, I am Mary Poplin. This is Imagineer Systems 2014 NAB Demos. Now, to just remind you, everything I just showed you is going to be available in version 4 in stereo, right? So we also are going to have customizable keyboard shortcuts. We're going to have Python scripting. We're going to have retina display support and UI improvements. And we're going to have new exports and code exports. Thanks so much. I hope you guys have a wonderful day. We're sorry if you didn't get to meet us at NAB. We're so glad that we can show you our booth online.